This right here is my main PC. In it, I've been trialing the Arca A750 for the whole of January and I've run over by a bit because it is the 7th of uh, February as of recording. But I think that goes to show how good the RK750 is. And this is something that people don't realize. Arc GPUs are actually kind of cool. So now it's time to report back on my findings on how the RK750 got on. Was it a complete disaster and I want to go back to my RTX 3080? Or might I just keep it in there because the RK750 has been totally fine? Find out in today's video because the answer might be a bit surprising. My experience with Intel Arc has been very good overall, I'm not going to lie. I've had very minimal issues and when I did run into problems, they were very minor. Anyone who doubts that I haven't been running this Intel Arc GPU, yeah, look how dusty it is. I've been able to do all of my work as the videos have still been coming out on the channel and the short form content is still being edited. So there's no problems there. And for when I want to unwind, gaming has also been, for the most part, totally fine on the RK750. I have run into a few issues, which I'll go over in a minute. But for the most part, I can't really think of anything I could knock the RK750 down for. Let's start off with modern games. So that is DirectX 12 and DirectX 11 titles. And to be honest, these were some of the more troublesome titles compared to the DX9 ones. However, I've played games like Jedi Survivor, Assassin's Creed Origins, Cyberpunk 2077, and much more. And for the most part, I can't really think of any problems off the top of my head. The biggest problem that I've run into was a weird lighting bug in Assassin's Creed Origins. If you were in a forested or a swampy area at night, it would result in major graphical artifacts. But what I'll do to fix this is skip to the day by meditating and it would totally fix it. It's a really unique and weird bug, but I was able to replicate it. So yeah, it's very minor, all things considered. But if you want to play Assassin's Creed Origins on your PC, maybe skip the Intel Arc GPU. There was also Battlefield 2042, and this ran quite horribly on the RK750. I'm not sure if this is down to just the sheer performance of it, or down to some driver optimization, or probably game optimization, knowing dice. But the performance in Battlefield 2042 did leave quite a lot to be desired but I don't really play that game that often, so I'm not really that bothered. But that's where the bad news ends for modern games, because I've played other games like Jedi Survivor, which runs totally fine on the RK750. I've had zero issues with that. And a game I like to play quite often is Battlefield 1, and I've had literally zero problems related to the Intel GPU as well. So this kind of leads me to believe that Arc GPUs are totally fine for gaming, apart from that one weird bug in Assassin's Creed Origins. Where Intel Arc struggles, or is supposed to struggle, is DirectX 9 games. This is because it doesn't have DirectX 9 built in hardware-wise. However, I've played some DX9 titles like Call of Duty Black Ops 1, GTA 4, which is a notoriously bad PC port, and I've also played Portal 2 as well, and Good news, all of these games ran totally fine with no issues at all. There weren't any weird stutters, which is something I was expecting in GTA 4 because no matter what PC you've got, that game doesn't seem to run well. But Portal 2 ran totally fine and Black Ops 1 ran totally fine as well. Admittedly, my experience with DX9 titles on the RK750 is quite limited, but I will be working on a future video where I'll be comparing the RK750 in older DX9 titles to maybe a similarly powerful GPU like the GTX 1080 Ti perhaps, and how you could fix performance if you run into issues on the A750. So if that's something you wanna see, make sure you stay subscribed. You can't have all play and no work, and that brings me on to Adobe Premiere Pro. This is the main application I use for all of my video editing, and to be honest, for all of my productivity, I edit more videos and like photos and stuff like that. But rest assured, the RK750 has been totally fine in Premiere Pro. But this doesn't come that much as a surprise. 
This is because Intel have been making excellent encoders and decoders in their CPUs integrated graphics for years. So why would the Arc GPUs be any different? In fact, they're actually brilliant for content creators. I'll link down to a video in the description which goes over sort of the benchmarks and stuff like that compared to other graphics cards. And the Arc GPUs actually hold up surprisingly well. And if I'm honest with you, for the most part in Premiere Pro, the RK750 feels exactly the same as my RTX 3080, which is a good thing because this GPU only cost me £210, something like that on the used market, where my RTX 3080 will cost you around £420. So if you're a video editor first, and a game a second, Intel Arc is a solid option for you. Adobe's Premiere Pro isn't the only productivity software I use, but it is the only one that is GPU accelerated because applications like Photoshop and Lightroom Classic don't really lean on the GPU at all. So I noticed no difference between the RTX 3080 and my RK750, which is a positive, which means I can still do my work and I can still get lovely content out for you lot. One annoying thing I did run into with my productivity though was I like to have YouTube videos running on my second monitor while I'm editing and working on my main one. The problem with this was YouTube video playback would always stutter on my second monitor but it would always be fine on my main monitor. But there was a simple fix I did for this and that was just run the second monitor off of my integrated graphics and now it runs totally fine. One thing I haven't really tried is streaming with the AV1 encoder in the RK750. So if you want me to do a live stream sometime soon with this GPU, just let me know in the comments down below. So first and foremost, I can do all of my work and I can do it pretty well thanks to the excellent encoding and decoding on the RK750. So there's no problems there. And gaming is not too bad apart from some minor issues. But what would I like to see Intel add to their Arc software, which is probably the biggest downside to Intel GPUs. The Arc software isn't particularly great for the most part. The first thing I would like to see is being able to change the color range of your monitors. My main monitor has the full color range, which is perfect, that's what I want but my second monitor is stuck to limited. This results in washed out colors and it doesn't look particularly great. So that's something I would like to see implemented as it's in the Nvidia control panel. So Intel should be able to implement it in the Arc control panel. Also, I'd like to see a hotkey for recording gameplay. Both Nvidia and AMD have this built into their driver package. So I don't think it'd be too hard to implement it into Intel Arc control, but I'm not a driver developer. If anyone at Intel is watching this, can you please fix that lighting bug in Assassin's Creed Origins? It's, it's, it's getting on my nerves a bit, but other than that, Intel Arc's been quite solid so far. So that's my complaints out of the way. What do I think of Intel Arc overall? And I think Intel have done an excellent job with their first crack at making a discrete graphics card. I think they've done all of the right things by releasing constant driver updates, improving stability and game performance. But I would like to see a bit more features in the Arc control panel. That's the one thing I'd like to ask for because compared to AMD software and Nvidia GeForce, it's kind of lackluster, but I'll let Intel off as it is their first crack at making a discrete graphics card. If the upcoming Battle Mage generation of Arc GPUs is anything like Late Stage Alchemist, Intel are going to be on to a winner. And this is what I want to see in the GPU market. We need competition and Intel joining the market has been nothing but good. I think Intel Arc is a very strong offering now. It does have its issues granted, like that weird lighting bug in Assassin's Creed Origins. But at the price point these GPUs are priced at, like £200 for the RK750, they offer some serious value. And it's not like Intel are kind of on the fence about carrying on art graphics cards either because they're bringing out constant driver updates and it's looking like Battle Mage is going to be a pretty decent launch for them. So I would say if you wanted to pick up an art graphics card, I mean... My experience has been solid and I'm expecting your experience to be quite solid as well. So can I finally recommend Intel Arc graphics cards for both gamers and content creators after trialing mine for, well, it's been more than a month now because I've ran over by a bit, but I've been trialing it for quite a while and I can firmly say 
Intel GPUs are solid options. I don't want to hear any more slander about them being totally unusable for some weird reason because the drivers are rubbish or whatever. Because they're not. The drivers run totally fine, apart from some minor issues, of course. And this is where I'm going to be dropping the bombshell. The RK750 is staying in my PC and I'm probably going to sell the RTX 3080. I just don't need the power of it and I could just invest that money into the channel with better lighting or better camera equipment or more GPUs to take a look at for GPU benchmarking videos. So with that being said, I'm going to leave this video here. If you want to see how the RK750 gets on in some gaming benchmarks, there's a video for that right up there. And you can watch the RTX 3080 video down there if that one suits you more.